what do you believe right now that's making you feel this way? And when you analyse it, you realise how irrational you can be at times. Every single one of our major customers and minor customers all shut their doors overnight. It's not sales per se, but the outcome of it is because people get to know you, they get to see you. But, you know, what's the culture like at the business? What do what do we stand for, the values? I've got to tick that box on my personal development programme for the... I don't really want to be here. Scaling up a business isn't easy. If it were, we wouldn't have less than 4% of businesses scaling beyond 10 employees or around a million pound turnover level and less than 1% beyond 50 employees. But the contribution that we make as owner managers to our economies is immense and should never be underestimated. Yet it can be a tough gig for all of us at times. And only other business owners truly understand the challenges that we face. And through Scale Up Radio, we aim to help make things a little easier. We interview guests who have been where you are now and may have faced some of the challenges that you are facing. And they offer their thoughts and advice on what has worked for them, as well as what didn't. And we've also combined many of the lessons from these interviews and also through working with hundreds of owner managers over the last 10 years or so into a practical scale up handbook that we've called the Entrepreneurial Scale Up System or ESAS. And it's for owner managers like you and me as we navigate our own scale up journey. And you can order a copy through your favorite online book retailer or by going to all the W's, esasgroup.co.uk, www esusgroup.co.uk Today on Scallop Radio, I interview Gary Giles, who is the founder of Ogle World. And uh, there's lots of things about this that really made me smile, and I know they're going to make you smile too. One is how he came up with the name Ogle. Another is the fact that I don't think I've interviewed anyone else who can remember the exact date and time that uh, they came up with the idea or at least had the inspiration to go ahead with it. And I've also not had anyone reference a historical ca- character, and in this case, Bonnie Prince Charlie, as being instrumental in and fundamental in the design of the of the product. So that's all around a unique concept in building design and essentially using recycled plastics to build walls and modular buildings and we uncover all sorts of lessons along the way from right at the beginning from going to the idea to the proof of concept phase some of the struggles around that whole aspect of it and then the journey of getting patents uh, and the types of patents that he's that he's got we also cover his successful experience on dragon's den and a subsequent crowdfunding round and a number of other things besides so rather than spoil the story let's go across and hear the full story from gary Welcome to another episode of Scale Up Radio. I'm here today with Gary Giles, who is the founder of Ogle. So, Gary, welcome to Scale Up Radio. Hi, Kevin. Yes, so glad that you have me on. Shall we say on the program? Oh, it's great, and I know this is going to be a fascinating discussion. So, Ogle, what's that all about? Tell us all about Ogle. What is Ogle? Well, it's in essence a construction system that uses waste plastic to build. Uh, walls, roofs, floors, etc., using waste polystyrene, um, which that's it in, in a nutshell what we do. Uh, yep. It's a little bit shade more complex than that, but the idea was was to try and sort of turn something from you know sort of the phrase I always like to use is uh, you know with plastic we make the most temporary things out of the most permanent substances, i.e. Right. plastic is very very permanent. Yeah, but, but we make throwaway items out of it, so. If we're going to sort of recycle it, let's try and recycle it into something long-lasting. And there's not many things much more long-lasting than a wall. That was the, that, that was the principle, really. Great. So a modular system that um, if people are, are trying to imagine it, um, it, it's almost like building something with Lego bricks, isn't it? Correct. Yeah. In fact, uh, you know, I, I don't think it's a big secret, but that, that's where the name comes from. The name Ogle is, is Lego backwards. Do you know what I hadn't? <laughs> yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people don't don't get it. If you ever sort of see that, sort of, I normally sort of play play a three two one game where I sort of say, well, because when, when people sort of say, where's the name from? 
And I sort of say, well, do you, do you want to play a game or should I just tell you? And most people play a game and the game is normally, uh, well, what's it made out of? Well, it's plastic. Yes, yes, okay, yes. So that's clue number one. It's, nobody gets it then. Then you sort of say, so the next clue is, well, what is, what's, what's it doing? What is it? Say, so what's a building product? Okay, so you're building something out of plastic. And then some people get it at that point in time. And then the end, I just sort of say, well, write our name down. Yeah, now read it backwards. And then, then the light bulb comes on. Ah, Lego. Yes, yes. So that's where that's where that's where the name comes from. Brilliant. So, so when did you start the business? When I started the business and when I had the idea are two separate things. I can sort of I can tell you to the minute when I started this journey. All right. And it was the Wednesday, the fourth of February, twenty fifteen, at quarter four in the afternoon. There you <laughs> go. So, so that was my epiphany moment when this journey started and here we are sort of eight years later uh on that journey and it was quite simply that i'm an accountant by trade and the company i worked for um i'd come back sort of at the um md had come back from a trade show in germany where they just bought a machine that uh was a polypropylene bag machine to sort of um, put renders which, which is like sort of like a t- kind of cement into a bag and he'd made a throwaway comment and sort of said, well, if, if worse comes to worse and, and we can't sell any render, well, we can always make sandbags for flood defences. Yeah. And this started an idea in my brain of, you know, sort of how can we sort of build better walls? So the, the idea okay. being is how can I build a, how can I build a flood defence? Um, and that's amazing that you can pretty much, uh, pretty much state that time down to the minute. Yeah, it's it's really weird. And don't get me wrong, it's gone through a lot of undulations, journeys, ups and downs and everything else in that period of time. But yeah, so I, I can tell you exactly when it was. Okay. Just, really, just really weird. Just 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 ping, an idea came on my head. Yeah. And that was it. It was, I've got to sort of follow this journey, sort of good, bad or indifferent. And here we are on it, you know. Great. So I'm I'm definitely going to go back to that and and try and explore some of the some of the milestones along the way. Some of the things that you said the ups and the ups and the downs. Before we before yep. we do that, where are you at now? What's the what's the business look like now? Well, what it is, I mean, sort of we um, the bit, the beauty of our system is that we can make a lot of things out of this. It's a, just mm. a different way of building walls and roofs uh, using what is effectively L shapes. Uh, and how they're linked together. It's nothing, there's nothing clever about it. We have patents on it and everything else. Uh, people sort of say it's, it's, it's so simple, and it is very. It's extremely simple. Well, aren't the best? Uh, aren't, aren't the best ideas really simple? Well, this is the idea, and uh, it was okay. It's really, really, really simple idea. Uh, so, what can we sort of do with it? Uh, we looked at our original idea of flood defences and went, okay, that's still a good idea. Um, but once we realised we could we put corns into it, well, if you can put a corner into something, then you can make an enclosure. And it sort of, and if you can put windows and doors into it, then you can make it into sort of, sort of a room. And you can certainly make it into a room if you can put a roof and a floor on, onto it. And it, all mm. of a sudden it's like, oh, well, you know, we can make buildings. So let's start off with doing... Um, Single story buildings, which which tend to be things like garden rooms, garden offices. Yeah. Uh, we make sort of uh, we, we we've done extensions on houses. Would you believe so? Only only small ones, um, but yeah, and that's what we've, that's what we started to build with it. But we've now moved on to prove we can do it, and we've built golf simulators. Uh, we've even built uh, a replica of the TARDIS for somebody yeah. who 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 wanted, who wanted an outside toilet. <laughs> but wanted it in the style of the Doctor Who TARDIS. We'll give that a go. Yeah, why not? Did they want it bigger on the inside than the outside? Well, that was, that's, I, I must admit, sort of uh, time and, and relative dimensions in space was, I mean, we can do a lot of things with plastic, but that's one thing we can't do, you know? Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> so can you give us a proxy for the stage that the business is at? You know, the size, I don't know, the number of, well, however you would define the, the, the size, the scale. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're still relatively small because we still we we came to market last year on a very much on a, on a basis of let's get our first fifteen twenty buildings built, uh, selling to customers, uh, selling to the end user, get the feedback. Where are we going wrong? Where are we going right? How can we get the products as good as possible? We did that. We had we had a few little challenges, but nothing that I can sort of say was 
what was major that, 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 that we had a huge problem with. We've been through that journey now, and now we're on the, on the journey of, of scaling up, basically, sort of uh, the nature of what was what we came to the market with, which was which was garden rooms and garden offices, tends to be something that people don't want to have a look at anyhow until come Easter. Uh, people don't look at gardens until that point in time. So obviously our campaign sort of started at Easter, uh, once it takes through the summer. And, and now what we're doing is just garden rooms and garden offices that are a flat pack that we can build that we can build on site or we can show the people to build on site. And we're also doing modular buildings that, that, that are prefabricated in our factory to then take and drop on site, which could be a variety of different buildings. Um, I say port of cabins, but it's a, it's a bit more, it's a bit more fancy, a bit more elaborate than a, than a port of cabin, should we sort of say, you know, but prefabs uh, that we can then hire, uh, looking at the commercial space for things like sort of temporary commercial buildings that don't look like temporary commercial buildings, if that makes sense. Right. And and presumably the insulation properties are, are, are quite good. They're kind of built into the way you, the, in, into the way they're designed, are they? Yeah, very much so. It's uh, we have a, a really high U value because um, when we say polystyrene, everybody assumes it's the white flaky stuff, and it, it is sort of insofar as that's that's one of our raw materials, but it's uh, it's a bit more of a solid um, product. It, it, it's 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 extremely strong from a load bearing perspective, much more so than than white flaky polystyrene. You know, yeah. it's more akin to. Um, Things like sort of uh, fridge linings, we use frid- like like the inside of fridges and freezers, which is polystyrene, which yeah. has a sort of it's got a great great U value. Um, so yeah, so it tends to be empty walls. People think well, empty walls can't be very good from a from a, a, an insulation perspective, but it's, it's actually as long as you can track the air in there, yes, which is what the, we do in, in the, the air shape, trap, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's got a fantastic um, U value, which is it's it's the same as a double skin brick wall. I mean, it's, it's the same as a normal house, basically. Yeah. Sort of, uh, you know, to sort of put it in uh, in layman's terms. Great. You know, so, uh, so who else is out there? You know, what, what, what? Who are you up against in terms of competition here, or, or are you forging a completely new path? Uh, well, we, we come up against sort of the the standard wooden garden room, which mm-hmm. uh, we do. I mean, some people sort of say, well, it, it, it's a really glorified shed, and, it, and it's the, the shed worth just nothing. I just, I just, oh no, it's not a shed. You know, it's, it'll be the world's most expensive shed, you know, sort of, because it, it, it has full electrics built into the, in the walls. The cables are all hidden in, in the interior of the walls. Okay, yeah. It can have, you can have standard taps and water. You can hang boilers or full screen TVs to the walls. It's extremely strong stuff. Um, so it's it, it's a, just, just a new way, of, new way of building walls, basically. So, yes, we, what we build it, there's there's other people in, in the market who who build obviously build garden rooms and garden offices, but how how it's built is completely revolutionary. In fact, we have a patent on it which covers us for UK, Europe, China, and the USA. What does that patent um, cover? Is that is is that using recycle uh, the idea of using recycling? Is it a particular way that you that you that you've it's, done it in terms of the sort of L shapes or what? What is the patent? Yeah, of, I mean, so I, I couldn't believe that the level of simplicity because because they also say sort of the, the simpler an idea is the harder it is to patent and we were able to get a patent on the l shape because what it is it's effectively it's, it's an l shape and then it, what's called a tessellated or upside down l shape that goes together to make a block type shape yeah uh best way to describe it and we actually got a patent on the l shape on the turn the up turn the a second l upside down to make a block shape. That's that's our second patent, and probably the key part of the patent is the fact that we have a an additional patent that covers us for if we want to want, want to build a really long wall. Then what we do is in in much the same way as, as brick walls are offset up up and down. Our 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 wall is is offset front to back, so we can build like long walls out of shorter pieces, if you like, you know, and then okay. put them all the size. It's a bit sort of different to sort of describe as a, without sort of doing L shapes with my hands. Yeah. But, but yeah, so it's, essentially, it's, essentially, so you don't get a long line of of a join that's all. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So 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 what it is sort of, um, because we are offset the front to the back. What it means is, is that we don't have a joint piece. There's no jointing, the wall. What what you're doing is so wherever there is a break in the front, uh, wall, uh, it is matched up with the. With a, a strong part of of the L shape on the on the back of the wall, so it offsets the front front and the back. And, the same, and much the same way, when you look at a brick wall, 
there's a like a, a gap. There's the offset the, the bricks that way. We just do the same principle. We turn the turn the thing on the, on its side, and we do that with with the front and the back of the wall. Bit, com- bit complex to explain, but what what it, what it means is that, that that we can build really long walls from from relatively small pieces. Great. So all sorts of potential applications for this. You're it sounds like you're essentially, although there's, you're, you're replacing other building technologies. So yes, the garden garden buildings out there and extensions out there. You're having to educate the market on a completely new way of of, uh, of going about building. Yes, yeah. I mean, sort of. It's. Um, I mean, sort of. It's 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 a really really sort of um, strange journey into farmers. I mean, I mean, what we sort of. I mean, I mean, I'm, once again, I'm, I'm not. I'm not a builder. I'm actually an accountant, would you believe? You know, but I come from a, a building family, and right. I can always remember sort of one of uh, one of the steps on the journey, should we sort of say, um, was I can always remember my, my father when I was a child. Um, uh, this, this is in the, in the days prior to um, health and safety being being what it is on building sites. So I, I, I would spend my school holidays from five years old going to a building site <laughs> and labouring. Yep. It was sort of, and I can always remember sort of watching um, my dad's also a bricklaying team sort of build a gable end of a house and sort of saying, you know, sort of why don't the bricks on the top crush the bricks on the bottom? Yeah. You know, and having at five, six years old and having having these time served, like, like bricklayers go, we don't know. Well, yeah. that, and it's all to do with all to do with weight displacement, you know. And my father sort of said at the time, I said, "Well, there's, there's only two basic problems to solve in building: how you join the same shape up and down, and side to side. Up and down's easy. Um, we have bricks, we have Lego, we have those sort of things. Side join things side to side is the hard thing, you know. Without without using glue, yeah, or, or having a solid side to work to, that's the, that's the clever bit that we've solved, really, you know." Um, so yeah, so education is a strange one in so far as, uh, because that's a look at and went, well, you know, I'm, I'm not a bricklayer, sort of, um, the whole world, it doesn't matter where you go in the world. One of the things I sort of found early doors was the fact that once you sort of put the pieces in people's hands and they play with the go, why has nobody ever thought of this, this, this L shape, this offsetting the L shapes. And, and the only, and the only reason I can put it down to is the fact that the whole world from being children, the first Educational toy, wherever you go in the world, the people are given it as a wooden block. Yep. So from being children, you know, so like sort of, sort of, you are given a wooden block to play with, then you're given a Lego. So you're conditioned from that age that how you build it's with it's with a six sided object. But what we have is a is a is a, a four sided object. Yeah, and I and I guess we'd have you know you just go back to originally building with stones, um, and then somebody somebody saying actually it'd be much easier if these stones were all a regular shape, and and the block shape the brick essentially came out of that presumably. Correct. Yeah. I mean, I mean, sort of to to, to put that in context, I, I did I did I did look this up many many years ago. The first brick, man man made brick that was used in construction. And uh, was found in Mesopotamia and um, from eight thousand BC. So the brick is ten thousand years old, yeah. and the technology hasn't changed in in ten thousand years. Yeah, you know? yeah. The only thing that's changed is the size of the brick because obviously uh, a human's hand was smaller back then. So the, so the the brick in relative terms has the same dimensions as it's had back then, exactly the same dimensions, just smaller for a smaller hand. Interesting. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know. So, so how do you how do you go about then educating people that are so used to bricks or blocks of some form and trying or or, or wood uh, and trying something completely new? We show them. I mean, a lot of people sort of saw what we did. Sort of, um, I mean, obviously, we'll we'll talk about the fact that I was on dragons. We were on dragons den. Yeah. Uh, and was, was, was described by Peter Jones as said it's just ingenious, which it is. So sort of, you know, without blowing out trumpets too much, if you like, it's a case of, of the best way of education is people watch the videos, but to put something in people's hands and, and sort of say, right, I'm going to show yeah. you how to build this, you know, yeah. with your with your own hands. Um, because one of our, our key motivations is to we always say is, is de-skill the process, you know, sort of sort of take, you know, one of the main object, objections why people don't build their own brick houses is because people can't lay bricks. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a, it's a time save skill. 
Yep. You know, it takes four years to lay bricks correctly, you know, and, and it, it's any, any level of speed, you know. So if we can, if we can teach people to build a wall and build, um, build a room in 35, 40 minutes, mm. not, not the whole room, but, but the, the, the basic principles of, of how it goes together. Yeah. That's it. People just know. So sort of all I need to call the screwdriver and some screws and just start putting the thing together. Yeah. It's not clever. Okay. It's not clever at all, you know. Oh, brilliant. So, right. Uh, well, so well, let's let's go back then to um to Wednesday the fourth of February two thousand and fifteen at three forty five. And yeah. uh, what what happened next then? So you had this epiphany moment. What uh, what happened next? I had this epiphany I had this epiphany moment and so what I then started doing was going, okay, so sort of, um I started getting plastic boxes and sort of cutting them up and sort of saying, okay, so how can this box join with that box? Uh very sort of what, what what I hadn't realized was I was sort of without it registering at that point in time, I was trying to solve the problem of how you join these plastic like container boxes side to side. That's yeah. what I was trying to solve. I didn't realize at the point that that's the problem I was trying to trying to resolve. Um I got so far along the line, thought, well, you know, so sort of, I know what it wants to do, how I want, want to build this wall. Uh I need other ideas on it. So I, asked, I thought, okay, let's talk. So I went and talked to a plastics company and I sort of said, this is beyond us. Uh, what you need is a specialist design company. Uh, and I was put in touch with a company called E3 Design in Newcastle upon Tyne. Mm-hmm. Uh, met with their guys and said, look, I've got this idea. Uh, how I want to build this wall. And they went away and did some proofs of concept. I've sort of, sort of paid for that out of my own, my own pocket. Okay. Sort of, and they came up with, with a, n- a number of ideas of sort of hear some ideas, and one idea that stuck at that point in time was was the L shape, was the two L shapes putting put together. Um, what they had, sort of, what they hadn't done was at that point in time was sort of say, well, well, how do I join the piece these effectively blocks these mm-hmm. these sideless block blocks together? And so at that point in time, I looked at all these ideas and I said, well, there's something in all of them, but there's not not a, a total idea. So I thought, well, okay, let's not kill ourselves over this. Let's go away. Let's give it a, f- a few weeks and months to sort of think about it. Think sort of is the sort of pick the different bits together uh, and put and put something together. And at that point in time, um, it'll be about three or four weeks later. So sort of, I thought, well, this idea is not going anywhere this minute in time. I started having dreams. Would you believe <laughs> of Bonnie, Bonnie Prince Charlie? And I was waking up thinking. Why am I thinking about Bonnie Prince Charlie? So this <laughs> happened for a number of weeks. This is this is a really it's sort of the best way to sort of describe this is uh, this journey. Is, have you ever seen the film Slumdog Millionaire? Yes. Where where the the basic uh, uh, how he's able to answer the questions in Slumdog Millionaire is the fact that his experiences during during his life had all added up to the fifteen questions. Yeah. You know. That was very much the this, this, the journey that I had, sort of, because my thing's history. I, I love history, so sort of. But I, I was like, sort of, what's this? What's this to do with Bonnie Prince Charlie? And then I had this eureka moment. I know what it is. It's to do with the offsetting of the front to the back, and right. off, offsetting the, the these joints. Uh, and the reason why it was Bonnie Prince Charlie is because at the Battle of Culloden, um, the English set their men up uh, in, in a thin red line. In such a way that when the Scots charged down the hill, uh, the English were taught to, to fire the shot at the man coming towards them. But if they hadn't killed that man, what they were taught to do was, was to offset and not try and stab the man coming towards them, but to stab the man to the right of him. So it was, it was like a, a like a an offsetting pattern of the, of the bayonets. Yeah. Because because the the man coming down the hill with his with his with his shield and his claymore, his the right most people are right handed. The right side of his body was exposed, and that's where you stab rather than stabbing into a shield. Okay. So, so, so what the English have done effectively is offset. Yeah. How th- their whole mechanism, and in, in the same way as they offset their stabbing pattern, I offset my, my front to my back of my wall. Right. Which is the well, well. Point. So we got Bonnie really Prince, weird. Bonnie Prince yeah. Charlie in there, in the Battle yeah. of Colada. Yeah, great. Okay, very good. Yeah. So that's that's where, and at, at that point in time, it was like, so, okay, I went back to the guys at E3 and went, you know, sort of, 
I had to go in there and sort of say, look, this is yeah, sort of this idea of the L shapes is really, really good. But it's the joint thing. And as soon as I sort of drew it on the board, and they went, that's it. There was just like one of these, like, wow, everybody in the room just went, you've solved it. That's amazing. That's going to work. You know, it was then to sort of say, okay, well, how, how can we make this thing? Okay. You know, what production processes is there that, that we can use to make this? Which is my whole journey on learning about how, how plastics are made, injection moulding, extrusion moulding, or rotary moulding, sort of all these different techniques that I knew nothing, nothing about because I was an accountant. Uh, um, okay, I knew a little bit about building, the building industry from, from family connections and what have you, but I knew nothing about plastic, yep. nothing about how it works, nothing about sort of how to then turn this idea into a, a working plan. So how um, are you just how? How are you going about doing that? And um, and are we are we still in 2015, or have we moved on a couple of years? What's... We've moved on to about 2017 at this point in time. So yeah. uh, I sort of set up a registered company. Um, two of the directors from E from E3 uh, uh, took five percent holding in the company for sweat equity to sort of develop the ideas further. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we. Struggled really badly to find a manufacturer in the UK who could even start to work with like this idea. And then we, um, um, after about six six months, we sort of, we were sort of looking at China, looking at Belgium, looking at various suppliers. Uh, nobody really could sort of do what we wanted to do. And then by pure luck, uh, we sort of came across um, a company called Ram Extrusion in that in in Worcestershire. Oh, in, right. in Drinking okay. Spa. Not, not um, far so from, uh, yeah, not, from uh, my neck of the woods. Not far from your neck of the woods, indeed. Uh, so we went, went for a meeting, uh, explained how it worked. Uh, and yeah, so it was, it, was, it was a very interesting meeting insofar as they've been sort of trying to sort of develop a building product from plastic for years. And I remember them sort of saying, um, Alan Watts, who's the, the MD there, said, what you've just solved in two pieces is something we 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 couldn't even solve with seventeen pieces, you know. It's, right. it's just simple, you know. So, so hence the journey started with with them to then tool up and do a first version, a test version of of um, of the system, uh, which is what which is what we did. Which, which still took took a period of time. It took about uh, about another year and a half somewhere and, around there. And how are you financing this? Because this is quite a lot of time and and money that's gone into this. So I would imagine. Already. Yes. The, the, yeah. I mean, of, of by about twenty nineteen, sort of, uh, I was still doing this. Sort of, I was still working. Sort of, still doing this pretty much part time. And then I said, okay, I've got to to really make this work. Uh, I've got to sort of do it full time. So I said, okay, let's. Take, let's take a risk. We got some grant funding to sort of develop some tooling, okay. which helped. Uh, but I still put my, my my own money into it. Sort of, uh, um, yeah. Sort of took out a second second mortgage in the house to sort of um, fund some some of the tooling and that sort of thing. No, I mean, yeah. Uh, so I thought sort of it's one of these things where you go, if I don't sort of yes, it's expensive, uh, but if I don't do this now, I'll always wonder what if. Yeah, you know. Um, so we did version one, uh, then showed it to a few people. Uh, I thought it's a really good idea, and somebody said, "Well, what you should do is put it into some various innovation competitions and sort of see see what people think of it." Mm -hmm. And this would be towards the end of twenty nineteen. Um, so sort of once again, so we 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 done our initial pieces that, that, that work. We we knew it was going to work as a system. Uh, and like I say, so sort of, a few competitions, and one of them was the Great British Entrepreneur Awards. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. and we sort of won the Northeast um, section of that award. Um, this would be about the March. So don't forget this. This is the when everything's kicking off with COVID. Ah, yeah, um, so twenty twenty, yeah, early twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. So went in, into that competition uh, and got got put. Put, put put to the we we won our area went went to the national final, uh, but everything was online at this point in time. There's no there was no award ceremony and, and that sort of nature, and then we got approached by the BBC. Um, they approached you. Sort of came 
Yeah, I'd, I'd actually sort of written to Dragons then to sort of say, look, sort of, I've got this idea and got no reply, just didn't think anything about the ending of it. And then they then, then they approached us and sort of said, we've seen you won this competition. Would you be interested, interested in, in uh, auditioning for the programme? Right. So we had to do, so we had to do a, an online audition, which was quite interesting, you know, sort of, uh, once again, I'm, I'm no actor, sort of, uh, so we went through this process with Dragons Den. Uh, this would be about the... Um, early summer of 2020, and then they said, "Yes, it's a great idea. We want you on the program. Um, can you fill in in October?" So don't forget, this is still all yeah. all COVID going on, and it was a case of okay, yeah. So sort of the product is so far down the line. We know we can we, we know we can build a building out of it. We know we can build walls and everything else, but I still didn't have the plastics knowledge. At that, 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 that point in time, so Alan Watts from Ram, I said so. You want to sort of come on the program with me? I know, I know you have no shareholding in the company, but you know a lot about plastics and about waste and everything else that I don't know, and I don't, I don't want, want to look a complete idiot when I, when, I, when we go on TV. <laughs> I, can, I can, I can cover the finances and I can cover the markets and everything else, but what I can't cover is is technical queries. And he went, "Yeah, I'll do it." So that was it. We went, I went on there. We filmed that in the October twenty twenty. Uh, uh, we got offered. Two two dragons made us an offer yeah. from that. So we had some lo- really lovely comments, um, really really uh, interesting process to be sort of behind the scenes. Yeah, tell us tell, tell, so tell, it, tell, tell us about that. What's uh, what surprised you about? Yeah, it? really in, in, interesting. Sort of, um, we'd spoken to a couple of people beforehand, so we had an idea what to expect. Um, but what you sort of see on TV is complete. It's a complete. It's just a built set, you know. Um, so that's so all the walls, the polystyrene, all all those big cogs that you sort of see, they're all made up. They're all made up of, of, of polystyrene. It's all it's oh, really, no. <laughs> really, really weird. You know, really strange. You know, and the the actual uh, what you sort of see as being the pitch on TV, which is normally ten to fifteen minutes long, is actually almost two hours. Yeah, you know, and that's and that's not. Um, stop starting for filling. They fill them constantly. And if you want to break for a, for a drink or something, then they sort, of, they, they, sort of say, they sort of say, well, just give us a timeout signal and then they stop. You have a little drink and then carry on. But you, you, but you are grilled for two hours, mm. you know, non-stop. It's... Tough, tough process. I mean, I, I, it's a tough process. I mean, but the adrenaline's high for two hours. You know, yeah. imagine sort of it's... That's, that's going some, you know. So when you sort of come out... Uh, I mean, people who don't get an offer, uh, I'm, I'm sure it must, it must be the most deflating thing in the world. Because I sort of came out and felt, you know, really happy that we've been we've been offered two dragons, uh, which was great. But I was just exhausted. It was the most exhausting yeah. thing, to be grilled constantly for two hours. You know, mentally it was it was so tough. And what were what were some of the key key things that they wanted to drill into and really really find out? Um, there was obviously the finances. Uh, they want to know about that. They want to know about sort of where our waste came from, uh, mm-hmm. which was all quite strange because we'd assumed that uh, the person who would be most up on this would have been Deborah Maiden. Yeah. Uh, and she sort of looked at us and sort of, I reckon remember one of her comments was, well, you won't get enough waste polystyrene. Was, mm, so we, we've gone through gone through everything else and what she sort of said is I don't think you get enough waste polystyrene didn't give us a chance to reply uh, and for that reason I'm out and it was like sort of well do you know where what our sources are it, she, she, she'd gone out at this point in time and, and then obviously it's conversation with, with some, some of the dragons that were left at this this point yeah because uh, she she left the, although on TV it looks like sort of she, she leaves in the middle it was cutting it, she actually sort of opted out after about an hour or so you know yeah and it was like so one of the one of the other dragons that sort of said well what's the sources of polystyrene i said well yes it's waste packaging which you see but it's also things like the inside lining of fridges lots of parts in cars so mm-hmm. i said well yes okay we may reduce some of our polystyrene packaging but in reality so we're not going to stop using fridges and freezers we're not going to stop using motor cars or yeah. sort of any even electric cars so many components are made from polystyrene it's, it's incredible yeah, you know. yeah. I think she described herself as a as a purist, doesn't she? From from that aspect, and she was coming from the from the angle that um, ideally we're 
we're encouraging people to stop using these um, these products rather than recycle and encourage which, people to use it and then recycle. Yeah, which which I which I fully I fully agree with. I'm fully on board with 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 Deborah Maiden in that in that perspective. Uh, but what we sort of say is we use uh, we, we we view our, our product as being a full stop product insofar as once it's recycled into a, into a wall, um, then that's its final use. So that that wall will probably be in use for theoretically sort of thirty forty years. It'll it'll never it'll never degrade. It can be it can be constantly used as a wall. It can be taken down shredded again and used as another wall. Yeah. Uh, but but traditionally things like polystyrene packaging, yes, it might get recycled, but plus polystyrene and uh, polyurethane and polyethylene, the average life of these of these products by the time they reach them, they don't have three to four iterations in their life, but the the time from virgin use to incineration is normally nine to twelve months. Wow. They'll make it used four times in that period of time. And and the the burnt, the good the good incineration. Yeah. So if you're gonna so my argument was well if you're gonna if you're gonna recycle something, well recycle it into something that's gonna last and be used a long, long time. And, and there's not many things that get, get used for a long, long time. Yeah. But a wall, a wall is a long lasting item, if you like, you know. Yeah. So okay, it's good, a good so, sort of describe it, you know. So, so you, you ended up, I think, with investment or, or a, an offer from Sarah and from Tej, didn't you? Um, so what, what, that's right, what, yes. Yeah. What were your key takeaways from that experience working on, on, on Dragon Den? I would say, being sort of grilled by people who know the business, uh, there were, I mean, sort of different meetings. Question about sort of sort of sources of material was all very very good. Markets was very very important. Uh, cost price was very very important. I mean, I mean, uh, Tuka Sullivan sort of left because he thought that the price point was was too high, which is a fair point at that point in time. He was he was, he was very very right, uh, which we managed to sort of reduce a fair bit. Yeah. Um, just, just, just by improving the processes, and then obviously as we sort of scale, then economies of scale will kick in place, so it, it becomes a lot cheaper than wood. You know, at the minute it's about the same price as a wooden, a wooden building, but it so, but obviously wooden buildings rot. I was, yeah. I was never rots. Yeah. Like, um, so we're so we're comparable now, but we should be a lot cheaper as in the future. You sort of once once we achieve economies of scale, um. So that was a, f- a really fair point. I think a big one was realizing that, well, from Dragon's Den specifically, is it's great exposure. The exposure was phenomenal for right. us. You know, yeah, was really really good. The power of TV is just phenomenal. Sort of, uh, you know, sort of when the program aired, which it didn't, it, we actually aired the last program of that series in 2021, in July, 2021. And it brought, so, and we, and we knew there's, there's going to be a big interest on the website, but it still brought the website down three times. Wow. So, so the number of requirements was huge. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there were lots of positives from that perspective, you know, really, really good because people sort of were into what we're doing, you know, yeah. people sort of realized you- that, how did you deal with that with that influx of demand? With great difficulty, because at that <laughs> point in time, there, there, there was there was only it was only me. Uh, still at this point in time, because we, so we weren't at market because uh, we did like a you know sort of having taken on board some of what Tito Sullivan sort of said, we we tried to do a version two that was that was a, um, a thinner wall, which was obviously a little bit cheaper. Uh, we took out a little bit of uh, the manufacturing process to make it uh, more aesthetically pleasing. Um, yeah. but there was a, a, num- a number of items just to really imp- before we sort of got to market, if you like, you know. Um, so w- we f- took those inquiries, we sort of took a number of orders, and sort of said, Look, so we're not going to be ready to, to have this in the market till November. Uh, a lot of people still on board with us on that one. Uh, and we, um, sure enough, we sort of survived our first orders by our first two orders by Christmas of 2021. Uh, and then after moving to 20, into last year, more orders coming through on the quite often on the, on the back of interest from that. Uh, we also did a crowdfunding campaign. Okay. Uh, because what what happened was, although we we we've been offered two dragons, we felt overall that they didn't have enough experience 
and also from their side, I think they realised that they that they didn't have enough experience in construction, so we the investment didn't take take hold with them. Okay, um, but they they offered us and and the, and the deal we struck in the in the in the, in the den was for uh, fifty thousand pounds for ten percent of the company, whereas we went to the crowd fund and we got a uh, quarter of a million pounds for the same ten percent, so we got five times more investment. Yeah. But, you, but yeah, I guess so, you didn't get a dragon on board. But uh, but if you felt well, that didn't, they weren't, but, yeah. Well, I mean, so I'm sure they're fantastic, I mean, and they are fantastic people. They do a lot of great work. Um, but what's one of the things you learn from dragons? Then is 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 because they have a contract with the BBC. They are not allowed to promote the products that are in the in the, in the series, which is really strange. Well, um, after, so, afterwards, yes, yes. So you you you. you if you've ever noticed, you, it, it's extremely rare that you'll see a dragon promoting, actually promoting one of the products. Right. Okay. Because part, because part of their contract is is that they cannot promote the product. So, so, so you I wasn't some, wasn't aware yeah. of that. I've just yeah, I've just I've seen the occasional things, I guess, on LinkedIn or whatever. But but now you mention it, I suppose yeah, you don't you certainly don't see one of them front and center holding the product or something and saying you know yeah. how wonderful it is. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I'm, I'm, you know, so so the contacts that they had in the construction, they, they didn't really have those contact construction industry contacts, which we sort of knew. We knew that beforehand, you know. So I mean, I mean, for us, the the absolute ideal was to get an offer, which which is what we did, and to get two offers was even was even yep. better. Um, but we always sort of thought that the investment wouldn't take place when it went to, into uh, due diligence. Mm. Okay. Uh, so we weren't we, we weren't overly concerned in that, in that perspective. Oh, okay. So and we always had a plan B that once the program aired, we'd have a we'd have a crowd fund set up to launch on the back of Dragons Den, you know, which right. was better for us really. So what we learned from from that was uh, is crowdfunding is really really good for us. Sort of, uh, yeah. we 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 now have seven hundred and twenty investors from forty four countries, you know, yeah, you know, and so, and quite often they're the best ambassadors. They're, they're the ones who sort of say, you know, sort of, I've got a contact over here, sort of, he's a contact, sort of, uh, introductions in that, in that perspective. Some some people are just normal passive passive investors, but you have a street where you have this this crowd of people who who are on your side anyway. Some some might have only invested ten pounds, some some have invested twenty thousand mm. pounds, know, but but they're all in on that journey if you like. And, and so, what have you what did you learn about how to run a successful crowdfunding campaign? Yeah, once again, I'm sort of something I knew nothing about. Uh, I'm used to sort of raising investment from banks, obviously being an accountant, and uh, you know, sort of from invest from sort of you know, sort of more um, larger term investors, should we sort of say? But knew nothing about crowdfunding. Yeah, um, and it was very much learn on the job. I mean, we we're quite lucky at this point in time because we we um, one person who'd seen us on. Dragon's Den is is now one of our employees, and he sort of watched the program, and it sort of said, we just phoned up the following day, and so I said, I think that is fantastic. Can I sort of? I, I said I'm looking for a job. He says, but to prove I can do it, can I do, can I work for you for free for, for a couple of months? I went. It's funny you mentioned that. So we're trying to do a crowdfund. So yeah. he said, sort of, what do you know about? I said to him, well, well, what do you know about crowdfunding? He went, nothing. I said, well, that's good because I know nothing either. So let's <laughs> let's go on this yeah. journey together. You know, yep. which is what we did. You know, great, and um, and and you took him on after that, based on the success of, of and, and correct, the yes, yeah, sort of, and, and and he does a lot of our sort of a lot of our marketing and and social media work. You know, that's great. That is his expertise. Yeah. So, yeah. what's the what's the size of the team now then? Still, still quite small. Still, still only six of us. Um, yeah. But the idea, the idea is, is is because of the business model itself is. Um, what we want to do is, is manufacture really so we don't really want to get too involved in the assembly although at the minute we mm. we assemble as well yeah. um but the idea is is as the business grows we will sort of have like a franchising stroke partnership model in different parts of the country and then sort of teach teams so we'll then manufacture send it down yeah. effectively in, in flat pack format or a pre-built format from oh, our okay. facility in teesside yeah down uh, and then what will happen then is it'll be built wherever, let's say Cornwall for the sake of argument. I mean, last thing we want to do is send a team from the northeast down to Cornwall. Yeah. You know, sort of traveling and everything else. It's a bit, you sort of, it, 
it makes more sense for the building to go down, be built by somebody who's been trained to do it down there. I mean, once again, the training is very, very easy. Uh, you know, so we, sort of, it's very much a case of sort of once you've built one building, you you can build the second one. It's a bit it's much like IKEA. And sort of, sort of you, you you build your first Billy bookcase, and you go, oh, that was quite complex, but the second one's quite easy because you've you've gone through all you've gone through the pain barrier on the first one, and there's yeah. there's not a huge. It's, it isn't like sort of laying bricks where you've got to repeat that skill time and time again for four years to have it up to, up to any speed. Mm. You know, so we de-skilled the process. And what it means is, you know, so so once you've built the first one, the second one, you build the first one probably half half the speed you build yeah. the second one, you know. Yeah. And then you are up to speed, and you just you just in a in a certain process, you know. Um. Or or once again, we can send it down on a on a flatbed yeah. truck and lift it over your garden, drop it in the garden, yeah. uh, and that's where we will use. Uh, obviously, sort of one of our strategies is to move into into the the B two B market. Uh, which could be sort of for use as uh, pop-up buildings, which could be sort of things such as in shopping centres where you sort of see the those little temporary buildings, which could be barbers or key cutters, that sort of thing, or in car parks. Right. We we turn up with a, with a building, drop the building down, level it up, plug it in. It doesn't look like a temporary building. or will look or look like a port of cabin, shall I say. Um, yeah. It looks like a nice building that you want to go into. It doesn't feel it doesn't feel overly temporary it's got like you know so it's it looks quite professional quite yeah. nice can be all decaled in, in different people's colors and that's one of our markets that's that that's one of the areas that that, that will move you know sort of um pick up the so what if you if you if you were to look back on your journey so far what would you what would you perhaps do differently with a bit of hindsight things i would do differently uh oh I would not be as risk averse. Okay. So I was very, very cautious. Um, we could probably have taken a, a two years off the, off the journey to a certain degree. Uh, I just didn't want to make that jump to sort of doing it full time because because okay. I was well because I was because I, I was working full time and doing this on an evening for you know a long period of time. Um, right. You know, sort of before I sort of took the plunge to sort of say I should have just I should have done that a couple of years earlier, should I say? Yeah. Um, but then again, when you, when you sort of put it in those sort of terms, if it's done two years earlier, we've got Dragons Den. You know, sort of there's all these questions in play. You know, uh, there's, there's never a right time to do these things. But yeah, in hindsight, I'd, I'd have jumped earlier, knowing, knowing what I know now. Brilliant. You know, to, right. sort of. Yeah. You know, it, I mean, I mean, there's no guarantees in business. And if it was to sort of fail, at least at least I'd I'd, I'd, I'd know two years early, wouldn't I? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get there is that adage about if you could, yes fail fail quickly fail fast fail quickly. sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. You know, yeah. Uh, so so I'll take that that journey on board definitely. Uh, a second one would be uh, delegate delegate a bit more. So sort of, sort of one of the one of the problems of being a at the point that that point a one man band is. You know, so you, you think you've got, you've got to be an expert in everything. Just learn, just just tell it, just you know, get the people involved that you can trust, um, put it on their shoulders and get them to feed back to you. Yeah. You know, because uh, there's always that thing that you have. We think so only I know best. You know, and you don't. You know. Uh, yeah. yeah. And whilst, yeah, so sort because of, because it's your baby and, and you're close to it and it's your idea and, it, and you think you've got to nurture it, you know. Other people come on board and they have, they have you know sort of perhaps not, not the same amount of of love for for, for that, that you do, uh, but there's no but they, but they do care a lot, you know, yeah. and they do want to make it work, you know, and, yeah. they, and they do put the, put the mileage in, you know. Yeah, and everybody's got a different perspective, and um, yeah, by by pulling them together, you, yes, you might well find actually that you find some interesting ideas that you wouldn't have come up with on your own, or, or exactly, you know, yeah. Ex- exactly. Yeah. I, th- I think I think it's, it's it's not about sort of being controlling people but it's about giving people a people a framework yeah and saying that's the, the, there's there's the there, there's the parameters that you're working to so within those parameters go and do it yourself to a certain degree you know so so where do you want to be in five years time if we're if if, if i have you back on scale up radio gary in five years time what uh five, where, would, where would i like to be in five years time i would sort of say sort of um in europe a lot uh because I've like, like, sort of 
the garden rooms is great. I like sort of doing the flood defences out of it, which is our original idea. We're supposed to do flood defences. Uh, I'd like to be sort of building. Ultimately, ideally, I'd like to be sort of building um, temporary housing. Well, 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 I say temporary housing. Really, it's full time housing. Yeah. The reason why why it couldn't be, you know, sort of uh, because we can, you know, we we put electric in these in these buildings that look just like a normal house. We put uh, we run water in in like like a normal house. So why why can't we sort of build one bedroom and two bedroom buildings? You know, sort of. There's plenty of brownfield sites in the in the UK. You know, we have a huge housing problem. Yeah. So so why can't you know? So that's what that's what I'd like to be doing. You know. Um, I mean, I mean, one of the big advantages of our buildings is, whilst um, they're not light, they are only one eighth the weight of a brick building. So, okay. so that they can sit on very small foundations, or even even what's called ground screws, which are like, uh, as the name implies, big screws that you put, put yeah. in the ground yeah. to the building on that. So, 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 so they don't use concrete. So they're really good for the environment. You know, which you can't build a brick building on that. You can't build a wooden building because it rots, unfortunately. Yeah. So it's a case of, you know, let's. I would like to be sort of building proper housing for people, in essence. That that just, would be the ideal. Very good. Excellent. You know, not not just here, not just here in the UK, but but abroad as well. You know. Yeah. No, really good. Thank you. Um, that's a really fascinating story, and it's great to tease out some of those experiences and lessons that you've had along the way, Gary. Are you up for a couple of quick fire questions before we bring it to a close? Yes, absolutely fine. Fire away, Kevin. Great. So if you if you could go back to your younger self, what advice would you give yourself? Don't be scared. Don't be scared. All right. Fair enough. Are there any books or what books or podcasts have you found useful that you might recommend to others? The one book I always recommend is certainly for somebody who's never been in business before, has got the first clue of clue, is uh, Business for Punks by James Watts. James Watt, should I say the uh, the one of the founders of Brewdog? I, 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 you know, just by nature of what I've done, I've read lots of management books, and I thought this some this is the essence of what's it's about. It's Excellent. like to be in business, and what you should be concentrating on in one little book. Excellent, fantastic, great recommendation. Um, what apps have you found useful? Do you do you have apps on your phone? What have you? What do you? What do you? What do you use? Yeah, well, obviously I use our, our own app, which which we use for for, for designing buildings. Okay. Uh, yeah. Which which we, yeah, which which we sort of use, which which helps people get get quotations sort of straight away. Which sort of so I'll, I'll recommend our own app. Yes. Uh, banking apps sort of sort of you know so we use the business app all the time sort of it you know yeah. it's godsend sort of absolute godsend using using that sort of thing. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, they they tend to be out to the two the two I recommend. Perfect. Who do you look up to, or um, who's had the most influence on on you? Would you say my father? Yeah, no question. Yeah. But sort of, um, um, and I, I sort of say one of the biggest regrets I, I have is the fact that he he died, unfortunately, sort of uh, about three weeks before I was able to put the first bit of ogle in his hand. Oh wow! You know, uh, because obviously, sort of, it, it, a lot of the journey at that point in time, sort of that the three D renderings, that sort of thing, the uh, the three D modelling. I'd show them all that, and just to sort of show show the first bit, and so say that's that's what you helped us start, you know. Um, yeah. You know, so it brings a little, little bit of a crook to a throw, you know. But yeah, that's that's the person. Great, lovely, thank you. And and I like to ask this of everybody, you know, what's the what do you find works for you from a marketing perspective? How do you find new customers? We use so we use a little bit of SEO. Um, we use the uh, Google Ads, uh, Facebook Ads, that sort of thing. Uh, we do get the advantage of uh, the Dragon's Den, and we're also back on the on the BBC as well. In I think it's June, we're, we're on a, a program called Your Home Made Perfect on BBC Two. Oh, great! It's building, we, 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 we actually sort of built. Um, it's classed as a porch, but really it's a, it's a utility building on the side of a side of a house in in Croydon. Yeah, uh, which we did. Last last year, last end of last year, which was filmed, uh, went really well. Uh, so that so that that sort of exposure is, is invaluable. Yeah. You'd be amazed. Trade shows, which we're starting to do now as well. Um, so yeah, there's there's, there's 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 more than just more than one channel really. Yeah, 
Perfect. Excellent. And if people would like to get hold of you or find out more about uh, Ogle, what's the best way for them to do that? The best way to get hold of us is by our website, which is ogleworld.com. That's Ogle, but let go backwards. Yeah. Ogle, and then the word world. So ogleworld as one word, dot com. Brilliant. Gary, thank you very much indeed for being my guest on Skelet Radio today. Brilliant, Kevin. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed that discussion. And if you're building and scaling your own business, you might well be interested in our book, The Entrepreneurial Scale-Up System. And it's exactly what it says on the tin. It's a practical handbook around scaling a business in a structured way. And you can order a copy on all your favorite online retailers, including an audio version, or you can find it and other supporting resources on our website, www.esusgroup.co.uk. UK. That's esusgroup.co.uk, which is e s u s g r o u p dot co dot uk. This has been a Monkey Pants Productions podcast. 